Uh, this video will show you that you don't need a like a cue. If I spin this camera around, you can see me there recording on a different camera. If I now back up slightly, this is my Lucky Q Mini. There is a scary similarity between this lens and the Lucky Q lens, so stay with me, Lucky fans. Today's video comparing a cheap little limits camera with a Leica lens compared to the Lucky Q. I shot both cameras on the same model shoot, and I'm pretty sure I can take the same photo with either camera, and I'll show that to you in this video. This is four times cheaper than a Leica Q and it's tiny. All the recent videos that I've shot on YouTube are shot with this camera, probably better than you may expect. Let's get into the video. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. This is a Lumix GX880, but don't worry, I'm not getting into geeky specs about Lumixes in this video. I just want to show that I can take the same pictures on this little cheaper camera than I can with a Leica Q. So if you love the idea of a Leica Q, but you want something cheaper, and if you're a Fuji fan, and in particular a Fuji X100V fan, stay with me until the end of this short video, and I'll compare the Fuji to the Leica Q, and then link a video showing both cameras head to head for any of you on the fence trying to decide whether to get the Fuji or the Leica Q. When I got the Leica Q, I was kind of a little bit gobsmacked at how similar this lens is to the Leica Q lens. If you look at the front, both of them have got exactly the same front end. Both of them have got the similar focus ring, the same kind of aperture scale, the same A, the same ring that clips on and off the front and screw it for display purposes. There's the ring on the Leica Q and, and there's a the ring on the little Lumix. So as much as we'd love to think that Leica are 100% Leica from owning both of these, there is definitely some Panasonic in Leica and there is a little bit of Leica in Panasonic Lumix. And the great news is both of these lenses are amazing. You can pick up these little Mach 4 thirds cameras for less than 200 pounds, sometimes with a lens included, but not this lens. This is a Leica Sumlux 50mm f1.7 Micro Four Thirds mount. And this is the lens that impressed me when I compared it to the Leica CL lens, the Leica Elmerit 80mm TL 2.8. The beauty of this is although the Leica Q is a fixed lens camera, you can use this as a fixed lens setup. Obviously you just don't take the lens off and the 50mm on Micro Four Thirds equates to 30mm in full frame terms. This little camera lens combo weighs half the Leica Q weight, which is already a reasonably decent weight, and it's four times cheaper. Uh, the lens is more expensive than the body, and obviously you can fit this lens to any Micro Four Thirds body. I just like this in particular because it's very small. Uh, top tip, if you are a Micro Four Thirds user, buy a Lumix body, not a Olympus body, because then you can use the the manual aperture ring, which feels really nice and very Leica-like. The main difference between the two lenses, the Leica Q gives you the macro mode, where the Lumix lens doesn't give you a macro mode, although it will go very close. What about for images? So I recently did a camping trip and I didn't want to leave the Leica Q in a tent. So I was like, right, I need something smaller, fixed lens, something I can just throw in a bag and not have to worry. So I took this camera. Uh, here are some example photos shot with the little Lumix GX880 and the Leica 50mm Stimulux 1.7 lens shot wide open with the Mr. Leica Lumix G preset applied. And you're like, yeah, that's great, but I've got nothing to compare it to. <laughs> Don't worry, I have comparison images. So I did a model shoot yesterday with Maya and I took the little Lumix and the Leica Q, shot both cameras wide open to see how they compared. And here are a series of images. So all of these images were shot in RAW. I applied the Lucky Q preset to the Leica images and I applied the Lumix G preset to the Lumix images. And then I just tweaked the Lumix G preset to match the Leica Q colors because every Leica camera has got a slightly different color to try and get it as close as I could just for, for my interest more than anything. And I'd like to think you'd agree that both sets of images are very, very similar. So the question is, can you tell which image was shot with the Leica Q and which image was shot with the little Lumix? Make a note A or B, which one you think is the Leica Q. And at the end of the video, I'll give you the answer. <laughs> then you might be thinking, but yes, you can use the Leica Q for professional work where you can't use that little toy camera for professional work. I'd actually disagree. I've shot two weddings with this little Lumix camera after asking the client in advance. And funnily enough, some of my best photos from both weddings were shot with this camera. The main advantage of this over the Leica Q is maybe two things. The first thing is you've got a flip up screen. I like the fact that I could shoot from the hip being I'm six foot tall. So, so being able to kind of look down onto the top of the screen 
and walk as I panned made it really easy and I can't actually do that with like a cue so one up for the little Lumix. The second advantage is this has got a little pop-up flash but if you get creative and you know how to use lights you can basically use your finger to prop the flash point into the ceiling and then use this to fire an off-camera large flash like the Godox AD200. This camera doesn't have IBIS whereas the Lucky Q has image stabilization however because this is an interchangeable lens and it's the lens that's more important than the body I'm videoing on a Lumix GX80 or GX85 in America that camera does have IBIS and it does have a viewfinder you may notice this one doesn't have a viewfinder so I use the GX80 if I want a viewfinder and I use this one if I want the smallest lightest setup this is actually the lens which was adopted by the DJI drone guys they rebranded it so you can pick these up with DJI written on the front for roughly £50 less than the Leica branded one and then for you Fuji fans what about the Fujifilm X100V so the main difference is the Fuji X100V being a 23 f2 lens once you apply the 1.5 crop that's going to give you the equivalent of 35 f 2.8 in kind of bokeh terms so you are going to get a greater shallow depth of field using the Leica compared to the Fuji if you want a really small setup you'll probably love the Fuji and if you prefer 28mm compared to 35mm you'll probably prefer the Leica Q um, everybody who spoke to me that's had the Fuji and now has a Leica said they never looked back they've never reg regretted switching to Leica and I was surprised by the cost of the Fuji the Fuji's new cost around £1,350 or $1,400 and for roughly £2,000 you can get yourself a Leica um, I pull a funny face because I think for the extra money I would definitely pick a Leica over a Fuji but I've got nothing against Fuji but that said if you do want a pocket camera the Fuji is a pocket camera the Leica Q isn't a pocket camera and with that I don't actually have a Fuji X100V to compare to a Leica in terms of image quality but I know a man who has Evan did a really good video comparing both cameras and he owned both cameras so he can tell it as it is being both a Fuji owner and a Leica owner so I'll link that video at the end check that out I highly highly recommend these small Lumix cameras if you use the Leica Summerlux DG lens I can get images which look almost identical once I apply my Lumix G preset if you're a Lumix user and you want my Lumix G preset I can make them available on the blog so um, I'll put a link in the description click the first link you'll find it and with that if you enjoyed this short video please smash the like button click here to watch the Fuji versus Leica video and as always a huge thanks to my awesome patrons